All right, so a very common thing I see with these Suzuki LT125s and even the 185s and stuff, the, the biggest questions and stuff like that are carburetors, aftermarket, what's everybody running? So I'm not doing anything special here. I went on Amazon and got a Kippa brand one. I have uh, some Walboro ones of theirs that work absolutely great. So I figured I would make a video series on putting this into here. I already, start, I already took out the old uh, Makuni one and whatnot and uh, decided uh, let's go ahead and let's put an aftermarket in. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So my reasoning behind taking out the Makuni was it is the entire time I've had this four wheeler five years when it comes to a tune on it even after a full rebuild kit everything it it doesn't want to hold a good tune on it but it's never no matter what I've done to it you it's never quite been a hundred percent you crack the throttle open real quiet quick when it's sitting and it falls on its face and you can hold it the whole time and it would just die. But if you do it slow enough or at a fast enough slow, if you will, it, it would rev up and everything. But uh, recently the floats for it had failed. And this is an 83 model. The float had got a hole in it, failed. And I fixed it, but I didn't quite trust myself with it and stuff but I got to thinking about it and everything it's like it's just this carburetor has seen so much done to it that it's it's probably time for a replacement so we're gonna go ahead and put this Kippa on here I've never like I said I've never used this exact carburetor of theirs but it looks like it's pretty well built and everything it's got this pull out choke style here but I'm not gonna be using that or testing it we're going to instead be putting the uh, original uh, style choke back into it so i already tore out the guts of the choke here and everything and to real quick to get this sorry about the sniffing it's a the weather's warming up out and everything so but i had to to get this brass thing out of here i was tapping on i'm like wait a minute here let's get a screwdriver wedged in there and pulls right out so that's got a very good fit to it but uh we're gonna be using the uh everything on the on the this carburetor to be putting onto the cables and stuff here so all the springs, the plungers, and stuff like that we're going to be putting onto here. I will notice that the, uh, real quick, that the choke springs are different between them. Now, this has got a thicker wire, the OE one, versus the thinner wire, but this is longer. So, probably the same spring rate in the end. I'm no expert at them. Don't you go anywhere now. So... But it seems to be a pretty common thing. People put carburetors from here and there on these and everything, but no, not really a video on any aftermarket. So I figured, well, while I'm standing here doing this, I wonder if we can actually put this on here. Yeah, should be able to fit. It's just a matter of uh, getting stuff put together. There we go. It's a good tight fit. It just fits like so. I have just screwdrivers and needle nose for this whole process. So uh, we'll work with that. I don't know how it's gonna well it's gonna work out. It's may need to expand that a little bit actually. That's a very tight fit. Take that spring off so don't know So expand this out just a little bit here. Just enough for the cable to fit. Not gonna go overboard. I understand it's supposed to be a tight fit, but that uh it wouldn't even that would just hinder a lot of movement. There we go. Oh, it fits in there. So it just needed to expand it slightly. All right. Also, what we're going to do is prep the uh, main cable here for D 
Do me a favor. If you like it, if you're enjoying this video, if you find it helpful at the end or whatever, hit that like button. Consider subscribing. I know it's been years since I've made a video on this, but uh, it's uh, it, it's it's been pretty trouble free, other than little stuff here and there. But uh, what did I do with my needle nose? Oh, they're behind me. There's a little clip inside here that holds everything. I'll have to get it out. I'm trying to remember how. So let me fight that out here real quick. Maybe. All right. So there's a clip inside here. You have to rotate that. It's kind of difficult to see. So if I can do that. But you can see it in there. You have to rotate that so that the cable can come out of this slot right here. Because it hooks in right onto the side here. So, And this is also your main metering jet. And... You adjust it based on uh, the amount of fuel that it does or does not need on this. This one might have been running a little lean as it was all the way down. So that could have been a problem for me. But the other carburetor, I was always having to mix with the idle, the main, the mixture adjustments and stuff like that. You know, you go start up one day and this way or that. And so all right, we'll go ahead undo this. There will, there is a spring under here theoretically under pressure yep so make sure you keep your hand above that and you're ready to catch anything and like i say we're using all the components from this setup as it fits this setup obviously so first do this put it over straight over would be nice Then you have to compress this. Take this, take your that, put it right in the slot there. Hopefully you guys can see. Put that there. Still holding it like that. You need to rotate your clip on the inside so that it does not allow the cable to slide out. So we're just rotating it around. And then put it back together. And it moves. So there's that. Now we're going to go ahead and put our carburetor on. Put it into our carburetor. Now you gotta get this correct. There's a lot, this slide right here needs to match up with, there's a pin on this right here on the inside. You have to match them up. And it just slides down in there. And then spring pressure, which there's not much on this one for some reason. That's why I didn't attach the choke first, so I can rotate that. Make sure that moves. That is nice and smooth operation. Make sure we cinch that down. You want to make sure that it's got a good gasket under there or whatever. It's a, it's a good setup. Probably should have put the other setup on there that come with it. <laughs> um, oh well. And it's got a new gasket too and everything. So... Should we? I don't know. They they look dead identical. So, but uh, I think we're fine. It comes with the new gasket in here. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, better yet, we'll take it out and redo that. Just be safe. All right, new gaskets on. Old one is uh, seen better days. I'm not. The reason I'm not replacing the top on this one is because. The, uh, my cable's got like one of the steel strands is broke on it and it's going to be a lot of a fight to try to get through things and it's not worth it. So, But everything runs smoothly here. Well, operates smoothly as it should. Ups and downs. So, all right. Let's go ahead and get our choke put in. It's a very good fit.
And it's got the side one here, and I don't know how well that's going to work or anything like that. I, I don't know. So maybe it's just an option that you can use that. But I want to still keep this one up on top. Everything drops like normal. All right, so pretty much get her tossed in here now. This is a vent tube. This is another vent tube. Uh, this is your flow. If it fails on you, it's your overflow. You kind of want this to, you definitely want to have one of these so that it can flow down or whatever onto the ground if it fails and not on top of a hot engine. I've got other videos on these too. The fuel system one is one of the more popular ones I have. Uh, used the Briggs and Stratton fuel pump. It's down here and so far five years strong on an $8 fuel pump. Rotate that in there like you, you, squish you in there like so. That's hooked up like so I guess. And I need a fill up screwdriver which I left Inside. So we'll tighten the clamps down, get the fuel line hooked up, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, fuel line's hooked up, everything's hooked. Right, so that moves, chokes on. Should have fuel in the tank. Probably all out, probably all ran out on me. Blah, fuel. Okay, there's fuel in the tank. I'm starting to hear now, starting to pump it more and really got it. There we go. Completely dry setup it a don't push the plunger in, just let it prime itself. So alright, carburetor's primed. <clears throat> I had to prime it past the pump there, so I'm used to working with a full fuel system or pretty much, and this was emptied, so alright, we're good there. I have no idea what's going to idle. I've left everything exactly as it has since I got it. It might be a little clanky on startup here, so run everything.
adjusts the needle for more fuel, it just falls on its face. Does this choke work? No. That didn't do anything. But uh, I think what I'll have to do is go in and how I described earlier on the old setup, wherever I put it, that needle needs to be moved up because when you're opening that high-speed jet, what you're doing, I hate how I lose stuff. My eyes, oh, there it is. So what I need to do is get in, get behind you guys so I can show this better. I'm going to have to get in. Take out that little E-clip right there and move this needle jet up a spot or two. And what that does is it'll open the main jet sooner. So when you crack that throttle open, it gets more fuel sooner. And what that allows it to do is hopefully stop from fumbling on its face. But so, so this carburetor out of the box, it works. I don't know how it works under load yet. But it works, and uh, just bolt right up as we've seen here. But go in there, and uh, and just move that up another spot, and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt to do, can be. Unless, oh wait, hold on, no, it's not. Push this up, and that's your little throttle retention thing, and that's going to go flying everywhere. And you move that clip. See those little slots on that needle right there. Right above my thumb you move that another slot you move this clip down so it opens up sooner so that's probably what i'm going to have to do on the inside there this one's on the leanest setting and uh that's that's what's going to be suggested to you but uh just showing a quick video on this and uh i think overall for the price i paid for this almost 40 bucks it'll work it'll do the job and everything we use it mainly for just wintertime use and everything so and it works great during that so all right just want to say thanks for watching and uh i got this carburetor off of amazon i'll see if i can put a link in the description for you but it's a kippa and uh i can't i can't i can't say it's any better than the old one but uh the old one it was the internals were just shot the float was had holes in it ate up and i think had just seen its time and whatnot so but say so, thanks for watching all right so i got into this one i figured i'll just show it it's stupid simple the kippa one is on the third slot down there are five slots it's got an o-ring on the bottom it's on the third slot from the factory and it wants more and i adjusted the screw over there the air mixture one and it wasn't really doing too much it was more of a high speed smack so take this clip off of here and they love to go flying so be super careful and i'm gonna move i'm gonna move it i'm gonna move it all the way down and everything you don't have to take the carburetor off for this operation or not so i'm going to move it all the way down and then put her back on and uh see how she runs here i gotta say a little better and i just the other one about a half turn out So it wants all the fuel. It doesn't really like to be the leanest in the world and everything. And the engine's got time on it and everything. There's probably some clearances and everything and stuff like that are not helping it with the best vacuum or whatever. So it's, I'm having to make up for that. So, alrighty. So I just want to say, like, once again, if you like this, if you like this video, found it helpful, 
hit that like. Consider subscribing if you like small engine stuff. I do mainly McCullough chainsaws, as you probably see, but small engines, I love working on them and everything. And uh, I do have another engine in that trash bag right there for this in case this one blows up or something. Or if I find another one that's blown up and everything. So, all right. I'm say thanks for watching and uh, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, might be more on this in the future. Probably will be. But right now, uh, she's running pretty good and everything. So we'll just uh, we'll do that like that. And yeah, my fenders are ugly too. Is what she is. So, all right. All right, well, took it out on a quick ride here, and uh, yeah, I use a 60-pound bag up on the front to hold it down, and honestly, it could probably use about 100 pounds, but uh, that works, and it uh, it performs pretty good. Uh, get on the throttle, and it goes. Um, it's a little bit better than the old Makuni. That's I've probably wore out, so throttle slides and everything and any moving components and stuff, so all right. Uh, well, I definitely, I, I recommend the carburetor for sure. It, uh, it works. It will get your, you and your family up back and riding on the trails and stuff like that and everything. So, uh, like I say, uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, hopefully, uh, you guys find this, uh, useful and everything. You can find me and many other helpful people on Facebook in a group called Suzuki LT125. So, be found in there and everything. I've been in there since I was like the 18th person or something like that in there. So, um... Like I say, these these little things are becoming popular and everything and uh, whatnot. So I uh, gotta do some routine maintenance on it and everything and stuff like that. So, all right, thanks for watching.